Are you tired of seeing more driven and capable people get ahead? Are you fed up with scrounging for scraps while others reap the benefits of hard work? Are you a lazy bum with a broken moral compass? Then I'm here to tell you not to lose hope. With just a few simple tricks, you can scheme and manipulate your way straight to the top. You can apply this advice to not only World of Warcraft, but real life too. Trust me, you'll be soaring high in no time. So let's get into it. Step one, butter them up. Friendship is more valuable than gold, or so they say. I'm not so sure about that myself, but the illusion of friendship can certainly get you places, like into a guild or a raid group. So how do you go about it? How do you go about making friends? Well, let's consider our targets, or uh, should I say, our future companions. Chances are you're looking to butter up a person who spends most of their free time accumulating transitory weapons and armor in an almost 20-year-old video game. You know, a big loser geek. Now, what is it that all geeky losers crave? Affirmation! They want to know that their decision to sink entire portions of their life into a video game has been worthwhile. Feed their ego. Nourish it. Tell them how in awe of them you are. Talk about how cool their mount is. How you wish that one day you could get the best gear, just like them. Then nod along to whatever boasting and advice they spew. Make them feel big. Make them feel special. Make them feel smart. Then, soon enough, maybe after a dungeon group, they'll get you in with their guild. Now, of course, there's always going to be those shrewd players that won't bite. But hey, you're not running out of bait anytime soon. Step two, make them dependent on you. Do you have a sought after skill, a utility that others lack? Take for instance, myself. As a warlock, I'm able to set up a summoning stone at a moment's notice. So long as a couple of bums can muster the energy to click on the portal, then I can summon raid members from anywhere, straight to my current location. Helpful if raid members are running late, or had to herf out to repair, or, you know, they're picking their nose. The convenience of a portable summoning stone cannot be understated. This unique skill makes a warlock quite desirable to have in a raid group or guild. Now of course, some of you may have chosen to play another class for some reason, but fret not. Most classes have some kind of skill that makes them unique, unless you play a modern WoW, in which case disregard this. Shamans, for instance, in Wrath of the Lich King, have bloodlust or heroism, depending on faction. A highly sought after skill. Paladins have their auras and blessings. Mages, they buff intellect, they conjure free food, they can teleport, they can transport others to cities, they... they get a lot come to think of it. I hope they choke on their mana strudels. My point is, if you have a class skill that people feel like they need, you can be forgiven for perhaps not being the highest on the damage meters, or being the one member of your group that is yet to master the Hygen dance. What are they going to do? Kick me? Then who's going to do all the summoning? Who's going to soul stone the main tank, hmm? Unless, of course, they have a second warlock, a rival. We'll get to that. Step three, bleed them dry. So you're in good with a guild. You might not be the best player, but they're starting to depend on you. Then now is the time to start leeching off of them. Subtlety is key here. You don't want to be making grand demands, like that your guild should be paying for your traveler's tundra mammoth. They will be, but making such bold demands will give your intentions away. Instead, you want to needle your guild members, individually. Approach those players that seem agreeable, the ones who are most likely to give a helping hand to a new recruit. Then, get creative. Are they aware that you're only 50 gold away from being able to afford epic flying? Do they know that you only need a few more key materials to craft that one item? They will be, because you're going to work that into your conversations with them. Make them think you're just a poor, naive noob who's down on his luck, when really you're a cunning predator, like a vampire. Suck em dry. Step four, sow discourse. Now, what do you do if people start asking questions? How do we stop the greater collective from noticing certain patterns of behavior? How do we dispose of that other warlock who thinks they're so much more capable than ourselves? Well, 
We introduce a little chaos and confusion into the guild. Just like Grima Wormtongue, you want to be whispering in the ears of your comrades, planting the seeds of doubt and mistrust. Hey, have you noticed how that guy only seems to play female gnomes? Kinda weird, right? <laughs> I don't know about that guy. Get them questioning each other. Again though, be careful. No one is gonna swallow a whole cup of poison if you hand it to them. You're gonna have to drip it into your more friendly conversations. Anyway, the more they're suspicious of each other, the less they'll be paying attention to you, the sweet, innocent little nooblet that you are. Which brings us to the final part of the plan. Step five. Get out while you're ahead. Eventually, the jig will be up, and you don't want to be around when things sour. Now, hopefully the chaos you've sown has bought you some time. Bonus points if you are able to butter up any officers in your guild, and are in a role that lets you access their bank. Because now it's time to help yourself to whatever isn't locked down. Think of it as an all-you-can-eat buffet, and you're not paying the bill. The method of exit, I'll leave up to you. You can, of course, just dip. You've got what you came for. Now it's time to cut ties before the suckers figure things out. So grab and run. Sure, they'll realize who the snake was eventually, but you'll be long gone by then. And that's pretty much it. A simple guide to manipulate and exploit your way to success. And speaking of exploiting people, allow me to now exploit you, humble viewer. I recently talked about the moment World of Warcraft hooked me in a video that should be on the screen now. I, I poured my heart out for you. Don't leave me feeling vulnerable now. Give it a watch if it takes your fancy. Anyways, that's it. No more advice to give today. Try not to worry about little things like morality or consequences or karma. In my experience, these things rarely come back to bite you.